My name is Alice Thomas and welcome to This Is My Story, where ordinary people tell extraordinary story. And we have two of them for you today. Our first guest, you may know him, is Brian Sidney, known as Beat Streets. He's been around Houston for quite some time now, rapping, and he's gonna share his story, how he became a rapper. Our next guest is Howard Cavert. He is an aspiring actor. He's going to tell us how he got his start, and he's also going to share with us his new film that he has coming up. Everybody has a story to tell. What's yours? <laughs> Hi, and we're back with This Is My Story, and we have our guest here, Mr. Brian Sidney, a.k.a. B Street, which is very well known here in Houston, and he's an aspiring rapper. And how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yourself. It is a pleasure to have you on This Is Our Story. I know you've been very busy lately. We've been trying to get him on for a couple of months, and he's finally here. So tell me what's been going on with you. Oh, just being busy and, you know, staying with these boys of mine. They keep me going. That's my pride and joy. And uh, through them, you know, they just give me a reason to wake up every day, every day and do something positive, you know. Yeah. So, uh, now, Brian, you were born in Houston, is that correct? That's correct. That's right. So you know a lot of rappers, you know a lot of uh, singers, R&B singers that right. has made it, and it's just a matter of time your name will be up there also. I know that you rap, uh, you're a ghostwriter, right. you do poet, I mean, you are very talented. And we're going to get Brian uh, to do uh, some uh, a song for us today, or he's going to... Uh, do some poetry for us today. So uh, y'all are going to get that treat today. Uh, what are the projects that you're working on right now? As of this moment, I, um, I've been collaborating with some people with uh, Solid, Solid Thug Studio off of 59 Bissonette. Okay. And, uh, uh, some guy named Rumble Slim out here. He's uh, Soldier Slim's nephew. Okay, I've heard of him. Yeah. And uh, we just been uh, collaborating and trying to come out with some more hits, you know, because uh, the first one was a buzz and the next one is a hit. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And uh, some of the places where you performed here at Houston, I know right. that you uh, be with uh, Wicked Cricket sometimes, right. okay, and uh, you perform at the Voodoo Lounge. Right. Uh, some of the other places that you have performed here in Houston. You said name some other places? Yes, sir. Um, Food Now was the main one. I've uh, done some promotion, I couldn't say performing, but uh, Club Glow, uh, Club Heat, which is downtown by Congress, uh, okay. which a lot to try to stay away from. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then you just, uh, basically you're going to different events, uh, you go to uh, uh, different uh, community events, just Letting people know about your name and uh, let them know about the different types of songs that you sing, uh, rap. Uh, like I said before, he's a ghostwriter, so he's written for other people, a numerous of other people. Uh, and that's what this show is about, uh, ordinary people telling extraordinary stories and uh, that we don't know about. And uh, now, right now, uh, you also work, so you're keeping your day job, but you're also... Uh, doing some writings, okay, uh, about your song. Uh, you've been in uh, some plays too, uh, haven't you, here in Houston? You've been into some plays? Okay. All right then, and uh, what do you want people to really know about Beat Street? And how did you get that name? Beat Street, hmm, interesting. Well, you can never catch me at the house. I was always out and about, you know, uh, in these streets, you know, because uh, I was always networking, I was... And I had another past life, and we all have a past. And uh, you live and learn from your mistakes. And, right. Uh, you know, when you when you are in the streets, you that's where you're at. And so you tend to meet people from different walks of life. And the, so, street, the streets educate you. I mean, in the streets, uh, sometimes that's the only way you find a little love is in the streets. Uh, and, you, and you know people from all different types of life, but... Once you meet people and you know right from wrong, then right. you steer away from that. And I used to tell people that, uh, you know, when we do things, it's not bad. It just was a wrong decision that you made at that time. Because 
we all can learn from our decisions. Right. And we learn right. from others, too. Right. Yeah. So the B, where did the B come from? Right. I got the street, but I need the B. Still, you know, people that's Brian? Up, that's short for Brian. Okay. So I start for the B in front of the street. <laughs> I like that. That's, 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 that's nice. I like that. Okay, and where did you go to high school at? I went to Elkins High School in Missouri City. People know it as Mo City. Mo City. <laughs> Okay then, Elkins High School. Okay then, and you have uh, any siblings, like a sister or a brother? I, I'm the oldest of three boys. I have two brothers. Wow, the oldest. I'm almost hoping for a girl, but it happened like that. Didn't happen. <laughs> okay then. All but, uh, right. And uh, uh, your mom, uh, I think, passed a few years ago. Uh huh. So did you look like your mom? Some people see my mother and some people see a mixture of both of them. Oh, both of them. Most you know, times so. you look like mom and uh -huh. dad, but sometimes you go, you look just like your mother. <laughs> Most boys look like their mom and it's usually for good luck. Okay. And dad is still alive here. Right. Okay. And does he support your music? He, he's, if I like it, he loves it. You know, he okay. just uh, wants me to be, you know, a very, you know, like most parents, uh, he wants me to be easy. Be able to be able to support of myself and be successful, you know, into whatever endeavors that is I have in life. Okay, so when you uh, come up with a, a song, do Dad listen to it first, or who listened to mm -hmm. your masterpiece first? I would say a good friend of mine named Rosalyn. I get her to listen to it. Oh, okay <laughs> then. All right then. Her critiques on it. Okay then. And um, where's your church home? Uh, Abiding Faith started off as my church home in Missouri City, and uh, I, have, I, I kind of deterred away from it. And I found I've been visiting other church homes, and um, right now, I would say Words of Restoration would be considered my church home. Okay. Which is in Rocheran, Texas. I like that. I don't know where Rocheran, Texas is. Now, for your rapping style, what type of rapping style would you say that you have? I wouldn't even classify it under a style because I like so many different types of okay. arts and music. Um, but of course, there are going to be people to classify you in a certain category because of the fact that my music, some being uh, <laughs> at the regular pace and then some being slowed and chopped. Some people say slow, loud, and banging, chopped and screwed. Some people uh, classify me with the screw era of screw music. And then some people... Uh, you know, my classified as gangster music, as you would call it, uh, because of the fact that I, for what I, with what I put out there, I used a Tupac beat, which, which was very <laughs> um, controversial. Okay. Because uh, it hasn't been another artist to step up and try to do something with a Tupac beat behind it. So you got a lot of people out here that some liked it and then you have some that didn't like it, but I can't worry about it. The people that have something to say about it, because I figure like if somebody has something to say about you, apparently you're doing something that they can't do. Okay. So that gives me inspiration to keep pushing on and doing keep what I'm pushing. doing. Okay, then. So well, inspiration that, is motivation. That, <laughs> that, that covers a lot of territory. Okay, then. So when you're in the studio and you're trying to get your, your song on, or how are you basing your words? Is it uh, things that you want people to hear about, or is it coming from... Uh, your actual life, or... I'm glad you asked me that. Sometimes it could be a feeling that I feel. Sometimes I'm telling a story. And sometimes it could be with uh, something that's dealing with my actual life because, you know, the music, I have to feel it. And then, of course, okay. that's the beat behind the song, which gives it life. If I'm not feeling the beat, I'm not going to do the song. It has to come from the heart. So your, your, art, your um, fans, they can feel what you feel when they right. finish from the heart. And if it's not from the heart, they're going to they're gonna know it's not from the heart because they can, they can hear it in your, your delivery. And it's all I'm about your delivery. I'm glad you said that. I was speaking to uh, a group that I am mentoring uh, today, and I told them when you do your song, it tells a story. Yeah. And you have to feel it. And if you don't feel it, hmm. then they won't feel it. And this is going to affect your money. So why would they pay to hear something that they're not feeling? It's a lot of artists out there. 
that's doing the same thing that you are doing. So you have to do something different. You have to bring it a different way in order for them to receive you and to accept you. And going like, I can hear it. And it's a lot of ways to sell yourself in the music industry. You can sell it through your music, the melody, uh, your tone of voice, uh, even with your presence. So if you work really hard at your craft, you can make it. And everybody is different. So when you go out there, you need to be an original. You don't need to look at nobody else. And that's why you're here today, because you are an original. And we'll be right back. Thank you and welcome back to This Is My Story with Brian Sidney, a.k.a. Beat Street. He is very talented and that's why he's here today. Uh, which we're going to ask you, who are some of the people that inspired you? Uh, I would say DJ Screw. DJ Screw. Uh, Tupac Shakur. Okay, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> and I had my reason for why they were so ins uh, inspirational to me because they spoke to the people, the mass. Okay. Uh, Tupac, as we know, was a revolutionary. Uh, he was uh, uh, a forward thinker. And if you listen to some of the contents of his music, you can hear his voice and he spoke it. He felt it. Wow. Uh, just he painted pictures when he when he rapped. Um, he's one of the very few artists that could talk about uh, not just life or gangster rap, uh, but could talk about his mother and like no other artist could. I mean, that I've known. Could one do of my that. favorite songs I have. Dear to Mama. Say, Dear Mama. <laughs> I actually heard his song this week, and I actually listened to the words that he was Thanks. saying. The most one that had was in my mind was I was hugging on my jail cell for my mama. That's mm. strong right there. Strong. But uh, he was he ended up saying that I was faulting you for a lot of things, and what I should be doing is praising you because you went through something. That <laughs> that that is a very deep song. Right, it just came to me. My every move is a calculated step, including closer. Man, that's deep. Everything is a you calculated know, it step. It has to brings be. me closer. I like that. I like that. And you always turn the uh. A negative to a positive, like the word that we all know is N I G G A. To him, it was never ignorant, getting goals accomplished. Okay. And who else? Who else? There's a couple uh, more people you had mentioned to me. DJ Screw. He, uh, oh, he, uh, he brought a lot of artists out that, that you never even think that would come out. Um, and it was something about his style. Uh, his music, it was just, it was just hardcore right at you. He, he, he would make, he would slow down beats, and artists that you wouldn't even think would rap came out like an artist named Johnston. You would never think that he would ever make a hit because his, his speech is heavy. He, his tongue twisted. He, but the way he put his words together and the way he did things, people had to feel what he said because of the fact that DJ screw anything he touched. Any people, if you made an album and you come from the South, he has to be. Oh, okay, then. DJ Screw. Okay, then. Oh, it is. Wow. June 27th was a special day. Okay. And uh, they paid remembrance to him because uh, that was like the, I would say, the major uh, DJ Screw tape. That if, you, if you didn't have that tape, you didn't know DJ School. <laughs> okay. Well, with your career, uh, are you planning on moving it from Houston? Like most people say that if you really want to make it as a rapper or gospel singer or mm -hmm. actor, you're looking at uh, Atlanta or you're looking at New York or you're looking at California. Are you going to stay here a while until your career gets a little bit stronger or are you ready to up move it and try California and New York. I'm ready to travel. I actually have a brother out in California. And, uh, he's out in Hollywood. And I plan on going out that way to uh, network and meet some of the people that he's, he knows out there and collaborate with them to see what I can come up with and get okay, things going man. to advance my career. Yes, so. Great, great, great. That sounds <laughs> good. And uh, so you're in the studio now. 
And what type of, uh, is it all rap that you're doing, or do you do a little R&B uh, with some of your songs? Uh, I've yet to do any R&B, but I plan on doing some R&B with some of my songs, because, uh, you know, I think all art forms of music comes back to gospel, and gospel, you know, it, it goes into R&B. I mean, it, it all generates, it all comes back. Comes back, back from the same thing. Right. right. Okay, so. then. Well, uh, B Street is going to uh, do some poetry for us, so we're going to allow Spoken him. Spoken word. Spoken word. So, in poetry, I came up in an age where poetry was very strong. Uh, so, uh, for the new generation, uh, this is something you need to pay attention to. And us old schoolers, we already know about that, okay? So, we're going to allow you to uh, do some poetry for us, okay? This comes from a place of uh, inspiration from a revelation. Revelation meaning to reveal. You know, the truth is the heart can't conceal. This here is called growth and change. And it says, uh, possibilities can grow like mm, water can change in the snow below zero. Man, we know you can go where you want to go, be what you want to be, if we just take it slow and show the young how to go beyond the points that hurts their muscles and weakens their joints to where we are strong enough to pray. See, every single day, don't start your faith into your motorist thinking every day of a way to overcome through April so we can see clear through May. May I add, how we know glad if we've never been sad, joyful or mad? Enhance your abilities and self-esteem, you'll be surprised they can fulfill your biggest dreams if you grow and change. There's growth and change. This other one you know, is, I guess, for the ladies because men have a hard time expressing themselves. So I can kind of, I have a way with words and expressing myself. And so this one here was called Never Say Never. <laughs> it says, never say I love you if you really don't care. Never talk about feelings if they really aren't there. Never say you're going to when you never plan to start. And never talk about feelings if you're going to break my heart. Never look me in my eyes if all you do is lie. And never say hello when you really mean goodbye. But now if you really mean forever, then say you'll try. And never say forever, sometimes forever might make me cry. But let me tell you something about a real man. A real man doesn't make love to a thousand different women. A real man makes love to a woman a thousand different ways. And if you're feeling me on this note, then truly you'll be amazed. Never say no. And that's it. Wow. <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank you. I tell you, when is your book coming out? Wow. <laughs> all these points, you need a book coming out. We would like to thank Mr. Brian Sidney, a.k.a. Beat Street, for coming out here today and sharing his story with us. We are going to follow his career because we know that he's on his way up because he started at the bottom and he's on his way up. So we will have him come back in a year and find out what he has been doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, and we're back with our next guest, Mr. Howard Calvert, the life of time for Mr. Calvert. And he is an aspiring actor, and he's also funny. He wears so many different hats, and that's what he's going to be telling us about. Mr. Calvert, it is a pleasure to have you on This Is My Story. I have been trying to get in contact with you for the last four months, so you finally accepted my invitation to the show. It is so nice of you. I know you're a busy man. Yes, but he has a film that he's uh, going to share some information. It's an upcoming film that he's doing. Uh, I can't tell you how many films that he's been in, but he's going to share that information with us. What is the upcoming film that you're doing? It's actually a play. It's called um, Juicy Fruit. It's actually... It's called what? Juicy Fruit. One more time? Juicy Fruit. I, so just, I just love the way you said that. That's... <laughs> It's a holistic play. Um, it covers HIV awareness, mental health awareness, 
And um, it's going to be held at Cullen MDC. Okay. December 12th and December 13th. Friday, we're doing the show at 7.45. And Saturday, we're doing the show at 1.45 and 7.45. Okay. Tickets are being set in two weeks, so don't forget to get yours. Okay. You know I'm going to come see you. It's one of my favorite actors. But you have been doing uh, a lot of plays, so tell us about some of the other plays that you've been doing. Tell us how did you get into the acting business? Uh, when did the bug bite you? The bug has always been there. Okay. Just, when he's like five or six years old? Yeah, probably before that. Oh. I just never applied it till later. Oh, okay. You know, kind of going against the grain, do what I want to do. Um, it's about four and a half years ago when I actually got started, though. I was scro scrolling through Craigslist one day, and I saw an ad that kept jumping at me. At first, I passed it up a third time. I finally said, let me see what they're talking about. So I emailed them back, and they emailed me back. We kind of went back and forth for a couple of hours. The next thing you know, they wanted me to come out to Baytown that night to audition. I okay. went out to Baytown to audition. As they say, the rest is history. The rest is history. Okay, then. So are you the next Denzel Washington or the next Will Smith or... Dun, 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 dun. I'm not Forrest Whitaker. I'm Howard <laughs> Calvin. Yeah, I'm the first. You're the first. So, what type of movies do you like to do? Are they, I mean, acting for as in movies and plays? Is it comedy? Is that one of your favorites? Is it drama? I just love them both. I love comedy. I love drama. The horror, you know. But my favorite would probably be drama. Drama. Yeah. Oh, okay then. So, where is this taking you? Your acting? Do one day you plan on writing your own movies, producing your own movies? Well, I directed a film two years ago, but I'm not ready for that yet. So. You're not ready for that? No. Okay, then. I enjoyed it, but in front of the camera is where I belong. Okay. Are you a Houstonian? Yes, I'm Okay, nice. then. And what high school did you go to here? All things, all things senior high school. Oh, okay, then. So are you single, married? Ladies want to know. <laughs> Ladies want to know. They want to know, but they're not going to find out. <laughs> okay. So, do you have siblings, sisters, brothers? Yes, I do. I have three brothers, three sisters. Um, yeah. That's a large family. <laughs> what, number, out. what number are you? Um, three. You're number three. Okay, so you near towards the oldest. Okay, then. The oldest boy. The oldest boy. Yes. Okay, then. So, what are some of your hobbies that you like to do? I'm not going over a script or spending time with my kids. Sometimes I kind of own my skills. I can watch movies or, you know. So, uh, as of right now, or have you ever written your own movie? Or, like, I, I, would, I have written, like, four, but they on the shelf because I'm not ready for them right now. And it, it like, came to me like second nature. So I'm going like, well, I need to put you right here because I'm, I'm, I'm dealing more, mostly with like music right now. So have you been working on some projects and you just push them to the side? No, no, no I'm, not, I'm not a writer. You're not a writer, just for acting. Not yet. No. Oh, okay. Then. Eventually I might write, you know, my life story, but. But well, part of it is here because this is my story. So we're, we're glad that we're getting you. We have had so many Actors and great talent that have came out of Texas. I mean, uh, Jamie Foxx was one, you know, and Jamie is a very uh, uh, good actor, singer, songwriter. He just go on and on and on. So pretty much when you're good at acting, you pretty much can be good at other things and write along the same line like producing, directing. It just comes second nature. Mm, natural. Right. So, uh, have you planned in your head, like, you know, when the time comes, I'm going to have to uproot myself from Houston? Are you looking at San Francisco? Or are you looking at California, uh, Atlanta? Uh, these are places that I visit. They're wonderful to help you. It's a good place to help uproot your career. Now, Houston is on, is doing pretty good for themselves, too. But we're still not the city with where 
Hollywood is. We have to go to where Hollywood is. So are you ready to go and pack up and say, I'm on my way to Hollywood to become this famous actor? Am I ready to go? Are you ready to go? If the opportunity knocks right now, would you just uproot yourself and move? No, that's, that's hands down, yeah. If okay. the opportunity knocks. I'm not going to go looking for the opportunity, though. I'm going to get an opportunity right here. So Okay, so you're happy here right now? Right now, yes. If the opportunity knocks in LA, LA New York, Atlanta, yeah, I'm going. Hands down. But I'm not going to go and hope because I know LA is filled with people on the same, exactly, they doing the same thing I'm doing, hoping to make it. So I'm not going to go out there just to add to the hopes. No, I'm not going to add to the successes. Okay. So what would you tell someone, some young person, female or male, what to do if they were interested in acting? Where would they start? Network. Um, I, started, I started on Craigslist, so I'll definitely tell you to go to Craigslist. Um, you got different sites. You got to beware of the scams and the scam artists. And I tell them, this is what you want to do. You do it. Don't let nobody just hear you from your dream. Right. If it's your passion, you should go for it. And I think the early, I know you started about five years ago, but the earlier, if a parent saw, I see that my son is always talking in the mirror, maybe they should get him into some acting lessons yeah. uh, or their daughter. So the earlier, the better. But I know schools are great for kids because they make Every you know, I think like in the third grade, you up there saying a poem uh, for Black History, uh, for a Christmas play, for a Thanksgiving play. When I was in school, I was very shy, so I always stood in the back and the teachers asked me to do something. But I know schools is a good foundation. And I was always interested in acting. Uh, so we had, there was always community that allowed you to test the water. Well, they have one on the 59 North in Aldean uh, Westfield. And for children that are interested, if they want to get into the acting, you can go there. They're always putting on plays for the community. And the teachers are there to, to teach the kids. Adults, too, it's there. It's, uh, I think it's Aldean Community uh, Center. I've been there. We're going to take a break. And we're going to be right back with Mr. Howard Calvert, the man of the year. Welcome back to This Is My Story with our guest, Mr. Howard Calvert, a actor of Houston and also a Houstonian. So, Mr. Calvert, where did you get some of your acting skills from? Um. U of, H down, U of H downtown, I took two years out of theater. I did, I did theater all through school. Just, what, sixth grade, I think. I did theater every year. In college, I did two years. Then I started laid off for a little while. I started having babies. Started having babies? Yeah. That wasn't acting, though, was it? <laughs> well, it depends on what you mean, because I might have acted a little bit, you know. <laughs> Overreacted, you know. Oh, okay. You know, I got seven babies out of it. I love them. They're beautiful. Four boys. I'm sorry. Four girls. Three boys. Four girls and three boys. Yeah, out of the bunch, I probably got one that's going to probably do something that I know of. He can moonwalk. He can, he can do everything I can't do. Really? And he how old is he? He's nine. He's the oldest. And how? And what is his name? Bryce. Oh, okay. He can moonwalk. He can hula hoop. I can't hula hoop. Yeah. He can skate. I can't. I ain't touching no skates. I'm just, you know, he 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 can do it all. He can I mean, do it all. I don't like to see him moonwalk because it it makes me mad. Why you know? does it make you mad? Because I can't moonwalk. Well, you know, and like when I was a kid, I got in trouble. How could teach you? He tried. Not, it didn't work. When I was a kid, I got in trouble because my mama went to work one day and I took her blue magic hair grease. And I, I tried to, don't laugh, I tried to moonwalk in the kitchen with my church shoes on. It didn't work. I, 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 I damn near sprung my ankle, you know, with the blue magic. You know the blue magic. 
I yeah, got so what you, what you did, put the blue magic I put the down. blue magic on the bottom of my shoes. And, and I, tried to slide. And I was trying to moonwalk across the floor, and it didn't work, you know. And I hurt myself, so I went and sat down. Did you cry? I cried when my mama got home when she smelled the blue magic in the kitchen. That's when I cried, you know. You were scared, weren't you? No, no, I got the hell beat out of me. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, that was, that was then, this is now. I don't try to moonwalk no more. Oh, okay, then I had a bad ending. You got it. Yeah. Tell you me. leave that to Bryce and Mike. They can do that. I'm, Bryce and Mike, okay. I'm just going to watch. So... You were acting when you were in school, and it just stayed into you, and some of the parts that you had when you was in school was? I did Danny in uh, ninth grade. Did Danny in the ninth <laughs> I grade. Went, I went to Magnolia High School for two years, and I did Danny. The only thing that was kind of weird about Magnolia High School is that it was majority, you know, Caucasian. So... And what was wrong with that? Well, I mean... When you say Greece, they don't expect to see me playing Danny. Oh, okay. So, you know. But, I mean, I did it, you know. Got in trouble a little bit because I wanted to change the words, but they okay. wouldn't let me. Okay, yeah. You like to change things. You want to, <laughs> you want to have things do it your way. I go against, yeah, I do. I go against the grain. I don't like everything being repetitious. Okay, then. All right. So, uh, far as acting... Do you think any of the children, you got seven, will follow in your footsteps? I, I, think, I, think, I think so. Probably four of them. About four of them? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a lot. Yeah. Well, I know I got some clowns in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got some that's just like I was when I was that age, and that's where I started. That's probably where they're going to start. Well, okay, then. That's good. So it'll be like a second generation. Yeah. Second, third, fourth. Now, you're on YouTube, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I have uh, audition videos on YouTube. I have trailers on YouTube for um, Squatters, which is actually my newest movie that just came out on DVD on the 8th of September. Great. And what is Squatters about? It's a comedy about basically squatters, you know, um, someone who takes over a house that's not theirs. They print up a fake lease and make it look like they actually live there. And, and fight I, you over, huh? Right. My <laughs> character was one of the main character's brothers. My name, my character's name is Killer. And I just got out of prison. I did six years. Wow. So, you know, I'm You need a place to stay. <laughs> I don't know what squatting is. I've been, I've been in the pen six years. I didn't read no books. I lifted weights. So, I don't oh. know. So, that's your part? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know what squatting is. I keep thinking they're paying rent. They get mad at me because I keep talking about paying rent. We have a rent party, you know. A couple, you know, I'm sorry. You gotta oh, watch the movie. That's a, you, I you, am going to watch the movie. I'm going to go. You buy it on Amazon. Um, Walmart should have it unless they're sold out. Okay, you hear that, guys? We want to we wanna see this movie. See how good he is. See how good I am. <laughs> good. You have to make us laugh, okay? I don't want to make y'all laugh. And, uh, okay, so we and what other movies can we expect to buy off um, of Amazon? You can get Race War. It's my very first film. It's the one I got on Craigslist. You can get that on Amazon. Race War. And what is that about? Uh, it's the black exploitation. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm going to put it like that. So it's a comedy also? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah, it's a comedy. And I it's don't, out there. I don't know if the studio audience uh, know. But when you uh, look at a comedy, it lowers your blood pressure. So it's good to look at these comedies. And if I'm looking at a movie and I go to the theaters, the first thing I look for is the comedy because I want to laugh. I have too many people making me mad. So uh, look at the comedies. What other movie have you made out that, um, is, that we can buy purchase off of? You can get, I did voiceovers for a film called The Hunter Trailer with uh, Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. <laughs> hey. I hate that you know who Ron Jeremy is. <laughs> yeah, Ron I did. <laughs> you can actually get that one at Fry's, though. It's on the shelf at Fry's. Fry's Electronics. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting ready to start a new film, hopefully beginning of the year, called uh, The Day I Met My Killer. Main character. Um, it's a holistic film. 
Is it going to be filmed here in Houston? Yes. Okay. That's good. Houston needs the business. Yes, yes, yes. Trying to get it there. You got to build it. The day I met my killer. So that's yeah, that's drama. I I know this is not a comedy. No. Okay. So that, but that's going to be uh, next year, right? Yes. Okay. That's one I, I wrapped uh, two years ago. We're actually waiting for the release of. It's called um, My Time to Die. And what is that about? It's My a, Time to it's Die. A, it's actually a psychological thriller. It's not. It's not comedy, but I don't. I wouldn't say it's horror either. It's I more, like the title. It's more like a psychological thriller. And that'll get you to go, you know. Oh, it's one of those movies. It's going to keep you. It's going to keep your attention. And it's a lot of like, suspense. Kind of, exactly. Kind of edge of your seat. You know, one minute you, you love my character, the next minute you you hate him. You don't know. You got to love him. I like that. For my character. I like that. Um, Mr. Calvert, he's in a lot of good movies. Y'all want to remember his name. Uh, I have been keeping up with his career, and it's growing all times. And uh, and these are the type of actors or actress that you want to follow up because you know when you go to the movies or you buy a DVD, you're going to get your money's worth, okay? And then you can always invite your family and friends over and get some popcorn and enjoy a good movie. And the good thing about it is you can just rewind and look at it all over again. Yeah, go buy it. Don't rent it. Buy it. <laughs> And don't buy the bootleg because you're going to miss something. Now, that's stuff. the truth, too. Uh, don't buy the bootleg. It will mess your DVD player up. Unless you buy the bootleg from me. You can get it from me, then it's a different story. He don't sell bootlegs. <laughs> He's just joking. She don't know me that <laughs> He's acting. <laughs> okay, so mom and dad. Is mom and dad here in Houston? Or yes, ma'am. No. Okay, then. All right, then. I grew up with my mom, though. Um, yeah, I grew up with my mom. Okay, then. So did mom spoil you? I was the first child. Was, so you, you were know, spoiled? I was the, I was the old, I'm the oldest child on my mom's side, and I'm the oldest grandchild, so. No. Yeah. The oldest grandchild, too. Mm. So mom, grandma. Shout out to mom. Hey, mama. I love, love you, me. mama. Grandma. <laughs> I told you I was going to be on TV. Look at me. My <laughs> auntie. Um, I'm just going to shout some people out real quick. Let me do this. I'm going to shout out to um, all the folks in school that thought I wasn't going to be nothing. Look at me now. Uh, all my baby mamas. Hey, love y'all. Um, you got on me earlier. I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. There's one special one. I ain't saying no names. You know what I'm saying? Everybody looking at me funny right now. Oh, no well. name. She knows she is. Um, my kids. All seven of y'all. Daddy love y'all. We're going to the top. Wait till we get there. Bugatti's for everybody. Uh, not me. I'm too big. Um, I'm just getting me an Escalade. Y'all can have other stuff. Um, I mean, everybody. You know, everybody supported me throughout my career. I love y'all. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Y'all can, like I said, go to Amazon. Get the movies. Buy them. Go to Facebook. Look me up. Howard Calvert. It's a household name like Clorox, Don, Ajax. Get used to it, baby, because I'm coming, okay? Um, what else you want to know? Well, I think Mr. Howard Calvert has told us everything that we need to know. And by golly, time is up! So that means that he's coming back, okay? I enjoyed you. You are funny. And he's coming back. We're going to keep up with his career. Also, he'll be back with us in about a year. And I love my studio audience. Thank you so much for stay tuning and being with us on This Is My Story. Stay with us because we're only going to be bringing you more guests, uh, people that is starting from the bottom and moving all the way up to the top. We love you. Thank you so much. <laughs>